Hello, in this video we're going to look at the least squares inverse matrix. Now, as background, I would recommend that you look at my uh, previous videos on generalized inverse matrix and the generalized inverse matrix for a symmetric matrix, because um, those will play a part in the development of this video. Now, the conditions uh, for a least squares inverse, and we're going to call it ALS, um, and, and in the generalized inverse, we used a dash. And the property for generalized inverse was this first one, that A, ALS, A equals A. So that's the property of a generalized inverse. So a least squares inverse is a generalized inverse. But now we're going to add a condition that this, this matrix product is symmetric. And, and perhaps a side note here is... In the development of the generalized inverse for a symmetric matrix, we showed that it also has what's called a reflexive property. And so if we were to put that in between these two, that it's a generalized inverse, that it has reflexive property, and then it's, this is symmetric, we start developing a list of conditions. And that magic list is out there, which I'll touch upon a little bit more in the next video on the pseudo inverse or the pen, more Penrose inverse but this list of conditions these in, these types of inverses start going by numbers so here we call it you know the least squares inverse but a common way to do it is called a 1 3 inverse and where the, the generalized inverse is what's called a 1 inverse and then there's going to be 1 2 3 4 inverses 1 2 5 inverses and so once you have this list of all common properties, then it's quicker to call them by their num respective numbers. But in this video, we have the least squares inverse, and it meets these two properties. Okay. So, But in the literature, if you see what's called a 1-3 inverse, it's actually the same thing. But, okay, so I, I digress a little bit. So let's look at some theorems here. So we're... The claim is that this matrix here the A is the least squares inverse for A, and this is for any generalized inverse of A prime A. Okay, so the goal is to show this the least squares inverse. And to show it's the least squares inverse, it has to meet these two properties. So that's what we're going to do. So by background video two, theorem three, we showed that this property holds for any generalized inverse. And because of theorem 3, then condition 1 is automatically met. Because here we have A, and we have A, and we have A. So look up here, A, A, A. So this middle part is this right here, but that's what we are calling a least squares inverse. So it does meet the property. So condition 1 is satisfied. Now, by background video 2, theorem 2, that we know that this generalized inverse for A prime A is symmetric, right? Because A prime A is symmetric, and then the generalized inverse associated with that is symmetric. So now if we look at this quantity here, and then we plug in what our least squares estimate is, um, which is, oops, yeah, which is here. So we plug it in, and then the transpose. So when you transpose, you take it into each and then reverse the order. So A prime A is A, and then this gets a prime, but it's symmetric. And then that goes with the A and becomes this. But this right here is just A least squares inverse of A. And so it, it is symmetric. And so condition 2 is met, and that is a least squares inverse. Now... How do you find a least squares inverse? Well, first of all, you find a generalized inverse of AA prime, and you and that can be done by watching videos, uh, background videos one and two, and then you just let the least squares inverse be this quantity here, and then you have a generalized a least squares inverse for A. Now, what is a least squares solution to a system of equations? Okay, well. First of all, we, we're going to think of the equations as not consistent. And what that means is, I mean, the, if it is consistent, you can still develop a least squares 
uh, solution, but it's equivalent to some of the other types of solutions. So we're going to really deal with a system of equations that are not consistent. And what that means is B is not in the column space of A. So whatever we plug in for X, we can only get you know an approximation to B or close to B. And, and that's actually our goal. So the solution is close as possible. Now what does that mean? So remember this is a vector and this is a vector. So if we subtract B to the other side, the AX minus B is zero. So we want it to be the zero vector, but we can only get as close as possible. And so some vector that's close to the zero vector, we want the length of that vector as, as small as possible. So AX minus B, you know, or the length of that vector, small. But how do you find the length of the vector? Well, it's the standard inner product, which is this. So we want this quantity, the length of, you know, the vector as, as little as possible. So this quantity should be minimized. That's the goal of least squares. Um, so if we, if we think about least squares like this, so the a, x hat, if, if it's a least square solution to this system of equation, then the length of this vector is smaller than any other vector you know, for all x. Whatever x we put in there, this is smallest. And note that there's an equal sign, which means that the least square solution may not be unique. But if it's the minimum for all x, then it's the least square solution. So here, theorem 2, we're going to let x hat be uh, the, the least square is inverse of A times B. And we're going to claim that this is a least square solution to this system of equations. And then also note that the minimum possible value for the length of this vector is this. So that's theorem 2. So here's the proof. So if we have the this length of this vector, and this is for any x we can pick, and then we add 0, so we add and subtract this quantity to this vector, and we add 0 to this vector, so we add and subtract, so adding 0 doesn't change it. But now we think of these two vectors as, as you know, used as four little nuggets, so one, two, three, four. So now when we do this multiplication, you know, we take this times this, which is this quantity, then we take this times the second, which is this quantity, and then then we do the, the this times this, and then that times that. But since we're doing vectors, the transpose doesn't change it, and then we end up with two times this quantity here. Now, this right here is is a vec, you know, it's a, the length of this vector, right? It's the standard inner product, so it's always positive. So if we get rid of this from this equation, then what's left is smaller because this is always positive. So we take this quantity and bring it down and this quantity here. Now notice that um, the least squares inverse of a times b, we're suggesting, I'm suggesting that that's the least square solution. So we'll just put in x hat there, you know, for this equation. Now over here, um, in up here, so we, if we factor out an A, left factor out an A, remember it's still inside this transpose, and then we distribute the transpose, we get this quantity here. Now, over here, A, A least squares inverse of A, this is symmetric by the property of least squares inverse, so we can put a tick in front of it. But then we can also distribute that tick, and we get, we get this quantity here, and we multiply that in. But notice that a a least squares inverse a is you know is a generalized inverse. So this is actually just a prime. So we get a prime b minus a prime b. So this is zero, and then we're left with this down here. Well, now there's nothing left to minimize. There's like when we're looking at the length of this vector, we're we're putting in an x and seeing the length of the vector. Did it get smaller? Or did it get bigger? We do that for all x's, but what's left over, there's no x involved. So this, you know, this won't change. And it's smaller than for any other x that we pick. So that is a least square solution. 
So, yep, and so I put double slashes, which means we've proved at least one condition in a theorem, and that's this one, that it is a least square solution. Now we want to show that it's a minimum. So we have this quantity here, so it's a least square solution in here, and then we just substitute what our least square solution is. Now, on this side, if, if we write factor out of B, remember, and then it's still all in this transpose, and then we distribute the transpose, we get this. And over here, we just keep, uh, we write factor out of B. <laughs> well, when you have uh, the difference of things transpose, you can just take that transpose in. But I, the identity matrix symmetric, and this quantity is symmetric based on the properties of, of least squares and inverses. So it's really this times this. Now, when you multiply this out, you get this times itself, and then you get this times that, and then that times this, and then I squared. And so you get this quantity here. But notice here, A, least squares inverse A, is actually just A, It's because it's a generalized inverse, right? Now you have this minus two of the same, so it's really minus A, least squares inverse of A, plus identity. But then I, I re rearrange it so the positive piece is first. And that's it. And so that's what this quantity is equal to. This is the minimum that it can take on. <clears throat> I have one more theorem, and that's to show that the least square solution for this system of equations is not always unique. Now, it can be, and that really has to do with the column space of A. But we're not going to delve into that just yet. And so let's let... Um, you know, ALS be the least squares and inverse of A. Then for any vector, this is also a least square solution to this system of equations. So let's plug in this quantity for X and show that it is a least square solution. So if we plug in this quantity, now we substitute this in here, we get this. Now let's distribute the A and we get this quantity here. Now, we earlier we showed that this is a least square solution to the system of equations. So we can just put in x hat because it's right. Now, if we distribute this into it, we get um, a, and then we get a least squares inverse a a. But it's a generalized inverse matrix, so <clears throat> this is just a. So we get a minus a, which is zero. And so this quantity is left over. And that is a least square solution to the system of equations. Well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Uh, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.